this podcast is part of the Pull Up a Chair Podcast Network. Let's build community through connection, conversation, and collaboration. This podcast is sponsored by Elever Consulting, editing with a purpose. Check them out at eleverconsulting.com for a free consultation. I'm Sarah. And I'm Scooter. Thanks for pulling up a chair with us. We are not experts on any of these topics, but we are hoping to spark something. Like an idea, a conversation, or even a revelation. Well, let's give it a shot. Let's Let's talk talk about about stuff. stuff. Hello, everyone. Hiya. We're here, and we are going to do another uh, one of these episode podcast things what we are we're doing is that what we're doing here i guess you didn't tell me well i turned your mic on yeah put your headphones on i guess that's a sign something was happening right we didn't know what that was a karaoke session it's a sing-off yeah we're gonna have a sing-off Ooh, no nobody wants to hear that sing off no one wants to hear that yes they do that's not true i want to hear it oh i really do no (laughs) no (laughs) Well, we're here. We're, we're going to do another one of these things and talk to you guys about stuff that um, we have opinions on. Yes. Strong not, opinions. Yeah, strong opinions, but uh, not professionals at not it. Not at all. No. If you want to know our opinion, keep listening. If you don't, keep listening anyways and make fun of us. It's and, totally fine. And if you want our opinion, you can ask us what and tell us what you want us to talk about. Oh, that's true. We we'll, like that. We'll give you some. I mean, our socials are easy to find. Yes. We're all over the place. And if you're listening to this, you probably already know how to get a hold of us. Facts. That's probably true. Okay. But before we get started, we always, I mean, I don't even know. Do we even introduce ourselves yet? Yeah. I, I think so. I said hiya. I don't know. I don't know either. That's Sarah over there. And that I'm, guy's Scooter. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Introduced. Again, Welcome. we're going to do this haphazardly every single episode. Yes. We don't, we don't practice any of this stuff. No. So, next thing, uh, we always start off our show with a good thing. Good things! Good, good thing. thing! So, who gets to go first this time? Uh, we don't decide this before the show I ever. I went first last time, so you can oh, go you did? first. Are you sure? No. no. No, I don't know. I am. Who knows? Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll go. Yeah. Mine is our daughter, Mariah. Uh, she finished her driving pre-test. Woot, woot. And... Actually submitted the paperwork to get like a permit so that she can take take classes and the, uh, so her driving test is going to be on the way soon. So that makes me nervous. I don't know if that is a good oh, thing. Oh, she's she's gonna be a terrible. She, she's gonna make our car insurance go up like eightfold. Oh, I know. She's gonna make everybody's car insurance yeah. go up that much. So sorry out, out there. We apologize. So uh, I think the joke is stay off the sidewalks. Yeah, please. Yeah. Just stay in your house. So, uh, no, but I'm really excited for it because I think that's a really cool feat that she has been actually thinking about for two years straight. Way too long. Yeah, two years straight since yes. she was like 13. Yes. She's like, I'm getting a license right when I can. So she is doing that. So I was very excited to see that come in the mail uh, and her. we get the little notification in our email that she's got it done. So I was, I was very excited about that. So it's yes. a very big, good thing for me. Yes. I have two. Shocking, I know. So my first one is that our oldest, Elise, is going to have an actual in-person graduation. Yay! That is super dope. That's a big deal in California because we still can't do anything. Um, So that's super exciting. It's outdoors in June in California. So, I mean, we might die of heat exhaustion, but that's okay. We're going to cheer until we pass out. It's totally worth it. Yes. And then my second good thing is that um, we have a kid, CJ, who hates to read. When I say hate, it's a it's a struggle. We fight every time he's got to pick up a book. But he read The Hate You Give. Speaking of hate. Uh, yeah. In like <laughs> record time for him. And he is actually asking questions and concerned about like, is this the way people actually think and do things? And we're like, yes. Great yes, question. Yes, it is. I'm glad you're asking questions. That's I'm happening glad at your you're school right now. reading something. <laughs> Uh, so those are my two good things. That's awesome because I, I think we were both on the same wavelength there. Yeah. For because of the title, because yeah. of what we're we're talking about today, and um, that comes that is that a good segue? 
I don't know, but it's the segue now. Yeah, it's the segue. <laughs> I really suck at segues. I was like, that doesn't relate at all. But guess what? Uh, we're going to get into our advise me not section. Advise me not. Advise, advise me, me not. not. So, advise me not. What is our topic for today? Unicorn snot. Oh, oh no. I think that was the disclaimer. That's my bad. That we Chase can't do that. your dreams. Yes, and there, we made sure that uh, this one is chase your dreams. And in parentheses, uh, we're putting here, what if you don't want to save the world? Yes. That is a big discussion in this house. Scooter is very pro save the world. And I'm very pro what if I don't want to save the world? There's got to be options. Right. Keep my options open. Yes. So what? Let's start with. So if you don't save the world, what are you going to fall back on? <laughs> okay, let's go there. What are you going to fall back on <laughs> if you don't save the world? <laughs> you. I don't want to save Catch the me. world. Oh, I'm saving you. Yes. I see what you're Catch saying. Catch me. Listen, not yet. <laughs> These arm muscles aren't there yet. Oh. Um, but what are your dreams? Me? Yep. Oh, my gosh. Other than saving the world. Specifically, how are you trying to save the world? Um, well, we don't want to put save the world. It's more about chasing dreams. So let's, <laughs> but your let's dream not, is to save the world. Otherwise, this would be a three hour topic about That's me. True. And maybe we'll do that someday. No. Uh, chase your dreams. My big thing about chasing your dreams is uh, I, I don't take a lot of notes. So uh, this is all <laughs> we talk about. It's all off the cuff uh, with me. It really has to do with what, what are you good at and what are you passionate about? If those two things somewhat align, that could be a dream of yours. Right. So a lot of people, they look, I feel like uh, a lot of people don't say, well, I really don't have a dream. And I was like, well, look at what you enjoy doing. Yeah. And then you find out, oh, I really enjoy baking. Well, are you good at it? Well, normally you're going to get better at it because you enjoy it. Right. So that might be a dream of yours to bake. Yeah. I'm not saying professionally and open up restaurants across the planet. I'm right. talking just actually bake. Right. And people enjoy it. That could be a dream that you've accomplished. Yeah. So I look at it that way. Um, doing what you love, what you're passionate about, and what you're good at because you end up getting better at it. That's kind of me on Chasing Your Dreams. When it's me personally, I like to get better at almost anything that I get passionate about. Obsessively. Yeah. So... Uh, they, and that's where I come to where it's okay that your dreams change. Yeah. Now you're overlying, you're over, what they call it, the, the overarching uh, dream that you have is usually a lot larger. Like you want to be a good person or uh, you'd like to uh, create a place where people can get together or have more events. And, you know, that, that can be a dream. Me personally is, yes, I want to save the world. Uh, mine is more about saving the world so we can, not so we can, but by helping others find a way to be, and this is a, this is not an explicit one, to not be a jerk to each other. Yeah. Um, I usually say it a lot differently, but to not be a jerk to each other and finding your own way to do that. And, and that, because that doesn't mean the same for everyone. So my dream is to try and get people to where together to where they can actually just discuss things, talk about things like minded, even non like minded. But there's people that sit around uh, a gaming table. That's one thing that we we do. Uh, I do professionally is uh, put together tabletop games and role playing games and play those in events around the area in Sacramento. But I really get that together so that people can have some common ground and yet be very diverse and different people across from each other yeah. and still have a good conversation and enjoy each other's company. Yeah. I feel like that's what I'm trying to do by saving the world that way so right. that people just be nicer to each other. Yeah. Um, that's always my thing. And then of course, music is another one is like, Hey, people who listen to the exact same music have very different opinions about other things, but that doesn't mean they can't sit there and enjoy that music together or play music together. Uh, any to that, that a point. So, so to a very broad brush, I guess. Yes. My dreams are, specific. uh, super selfish. I want you guys to understand that right now. I am not a save the world kind of person. Um, I am, uh, 
take care of our family and I want our kids to have a good outlook on life kind of person. So I have three major dreams slash goals, I guess. Dreams, goals, kind of same thing almost. Um, I want us as a family and our kids specifically to be able to travel and stay in places that don't have hotels and stay in places that don't have running water or electricity and really understand um, how privileged they are and lucky that they are to have what they have. Because I think sometimes when we have so much, it's so easy to be like, well, I deserve this because it's mine. <laughs> and it's like, you haven't done crap yet. It's not yours. <laughs> um, so that's, as a, Even as adults, we yeah, do that. We do for that sure. a lot. Sometimes you get so pigeonholed in daily life. You're like, I forget about how hard things were to even get where I am now, like the things that I had to go through. Um, my second one is I want to do a ton of traveling. It's always been my dream to if I that if I could find a ticket on sale to go fly somewhere, we hop on a plane and we go. We take the time off of work because our work can really go with us. We take the kids out of school for whatever amount of time and we're gone for a day, a week, a month, six months, whatever it is. Like, that's one of my big dreams that I have always wanted to be able to do. Uh, and then my last one, which is kind of odd, but this is my, I, I don't know I want to, but I do, is to like to be that person when you walk into a grocery store and be like, I'm buying everyone's groceries on aisle seven and then just buy groceries for people because I think that would be really cool. I think that's important. I think, because I, mean, I think we've all, at least you and I have felt that a lot. Like when we go out and we're like, we're at a place to where we can do some stuff for people. Yeah. Because we were in a place where we needed people to do stuff for us. Yes. A, a lot. And, and I think that's where I was going to kind of uh, move in. It's kind of triggered a, a question of here of um, how, how do we get there? How do we get, I mean, even to right now, we're, we're close to some of our smaller dreams. Uh, my dream was to be in, you know, short term manageable, you know, goals. And we talk about those, but, um, how do we, how did we get to this point? Yeah. Let's break it up like in two kind of two segments. Yeah. How did we get to this point in our lives? Uh, you and I by chasing our dreams and then where do we go from here? Okay. Type of thing. So mine, I think, is more interesting, not more interesting. Mine's, I feel like, more normal than yours. So I worked government for a long time, and not like the fancy, like, government where you, like, you make good money and, you know, pork and stuff, but, like, the boring kind of government where you sit behind a desk, you don't have anything to do all day. And then my sister and Scooter were like, you should do something else. You should take this leap and leave this job that has a pension and benefits and all this stuff that you've been so used to for the last 10 years and go take a job where you work for yourself and your paycheck's not determined and you don't have a retirement and you have to pay for your own medical benefits. And I'm like, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> that seems crazy. But in order to get as close as we are to our dreams, I had to step off the cliff and hope that something would catch me cool thing is, is I caught me. I determined that I'm going to work my butt off. I'm going to make sure that we have medical, that we have retirement, that we have savings, that we have all these things that we need to feel quote unquote secure in the way the world is right now. So, but so that we can get closer to the dreams that I knew that I wanted because the dreams has, my dream has never changed. It's always been, this is what I want to live. It's kind of like, I just found a fast pass to get to where I needed to go. Because I can tell you right now, there's no flipping way if I would have stayed working in government, would I? Would we be where we are right now? Fact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you say, I mean, what I'm getting is how do you get, how do we get to here was taking a chance. Yes. Taking a very uncomfortable. Well, Literally stepped off the cliff in the dark with no moon and falling for a little bit and then something catching you. Yeah. <laughs> And, and every, every, we all have different lifestyles, right? So mine was, I always stepped off cliffs. Yeah. That's just, that's always, not always, I wouldn't say always, but I have done it quite often. Uh, you know, I've, I've not quit a lot of jobs, but in a sense moved on from jobs yeah. uh, when it comes to those things. Like, you know, as a kid, I think it's because I grew up wanting to be a rock star, right, of some sort. And, and I just want to go out there and entertain and, and do these things. And then found out, it was like, oh, I don't like 
being around that many people all the time. <laughs> so I have to like, okay, let's let's reinvent some things. But even as a teenager, because as a teenager, um, I stepped out of high school, uh, finally graduated at what almost nineteen, got married, bought a house had kids, started a company within a year, uh, and that wasn't my dream. Okay, but uh, fast forward to now, how did we get to this point? I think it comes down to taking the chance, following your passion, and having partners, and I I don't mean just like uh, business partners, but life partners, friends, And those uh, those people in your lives to go ahead and pick you up when you fall down yeah. or are there for you when you're not doing so well. Yeah. And also being that person that can do it in the other direction. So because we, we've been at the point where we, we didn't have cars, we didn't have transportation. We yeah. didn't it, we've all we both of us have been in those situations, um, been in a situation where I didn't have a place to live. Um, yes. All those types of things. <laughs> so. Understanding how crappy that can be isn't for everybody. But understanding how crappy that is, even if you don't go through it, I think you still have to have that understanding. That's what I feel like being grounded. Yeah. So how do we get to here was we had a plan, screwed it up, made another plan. Yeah. Screwed that one up. Yeah. Made another plan. You see where I'm going with this? I was like... It's okay to make a plan and screw up the plan. Keep failing. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's And use your failures at, as successes. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a lot of, like, did you learn from it? Uh, there's a lot of those kind of things. Using your strong points in your life to make up for your weak points in life, and then your weak points get better. Um, all those things. So we got here by struggling and picking ourselves up when we failed. Or... Surrounding ourselves with people that would help pick you up yeah. when you fail. And also, you have to be that person to pick the other person up when they fail. Yes. Otherwise, you're going to lose one of the other. Right. Uh, you, either you're going to lose the person that picks you up, or they're going to lose the person that picks them up, and now nobody succeeds. Yeah. And you said something that I find interesting, as we talk about this a lot, is you talk about um, finding your passion. And so for a long time, I kept feeling like when you said find your passion, it was like, well, find your passion and a job. And I'm like, I'm not that person. And and I feel like there's a lot of people are like, I I don't need to find passion in my job. And it's not to find passion in your job. It's to find passion in something. Because if you have, you know, if you don't have a passion to do something, going to work every day is just going to work every day. Like there's nothing to really come to fall back on that brings you a ton of joy. Don't get me wrong, kids, family, all that stuff is joyous. But for yourself personally, there has to be something that you enjoy doing that you do feel passionate about. Like, I'm very passionate about making up menus and making food and cooking things. Like, I truly enjoy it. I learned a long time ago that I don't want to be a professional chef. It's just not for me. The hours, the amount of stress, it's, it was never something that I wanted to do prof- I, as I got older, that I didn't want to do professionally. But I do have a passion in feeding people and making people happy when they eat my food. And that's outside of just just money, just yeah. having a job. So it's because I look at it is and you, you said a couple of things that really triggered some of the things that I, I try and live by. Uh, because if if you know me as a person or if you've just met me, it might take three, four months of us getting to know each other before I even ask you what you do for a living. Yes. I don't. That's something I don't ask. Drives me crazy. <laughs> that really does drive me crazy. I'm more interested in the person and what motivates them to just be and what motivates them to get out of bed every day. So I feel like if your passion is to get a job so you can pay rent, we've all been there. Yes. Okay. I need a job so I can pay rent. That is my dream right now. I, (laughs) we've, I've been there. My dream this month is to pay rent yes, and not get my car repoed yes, or have enough money for my bus pass or, you know, it, there, we've had those. Those are very small things, but they're very important and they have to be important and, and your driving force. 
what happens when you can pay rent? Where's your time? Right. Right. Uh, what are you doing for your yourself to get to there? So I look at it as if if you're going to work to pay bills, then your job is defining you. Yes. What you do for a living, you can't lose that job. I go to I, that's what I do so I can pay bills. Uh, my motivation has always been me defining my job, me defining what I do instead of what I do defining me. Yeah. And I think we, we, as we become a more evolved, I guess, creature, we should look less of like, oh, I'm a baker. Oh, I'm a blacksmith. Oh, I'm a, you can be a blacksmith, but that doesn't define who you are as a person unless that is your passion and right. you freaking love yes being a blacksmith is like that's a whole different realm yeah. to me i was like if you love building porcelain toilets that's like your passion i love you because that's amazing to me because i don't have that passion yeah. so i i find that is like it doesn't matter what you do just be passionate in it yeah or be passionate about something and define that make that your job somehow yeah you may have to work crappy jobs or jobs you're not passionate about for a long time. Yeah. But you got to think about what happens when I can pay rent and I can afford that car payment or I own the car and I own the house I live in. Now, what are you doing? Yeah. Now you have nothing, nothing left. No, I also wonder too, and I apologize because this is kind of off topic, but when did we stop? When did adults stop dreaming like kids? And don't get me wrong. Sometimes kids dreams are like, I want to be this and this, which is cool. But as adult, when did we just stop being like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go to work today. We get bitter. <laughs> is that what it is? I think so. Cause we get, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to say it like we all do, yeah. but I think there's been at times in both of our lives, you're just saying like, gosh, I, I don't like my job. Uh, and it's not because the people are bad, not because the job is bad. It's just like, I really just don't like doing this. Yes. And you're, and we're so ingrained with, well, you have to do it cause you got to pay the bills. Right. Yes, you do. That is true. But you should be looking for something else then. Yeah. In life. I don't mean another career, maybe. Yeah. It could be the same career. It could just be. But look at something in your life. It's like, when did we stop doing that? Yeah. Having the dreams of, you know, running around in the yard with a cape on or a sword or, you know, having a micro a pretend microphone yep. uh, in your hand and being a singer or shooting the ball in the backyard. And I was like. I mean, how many times I saw on the uh, on the playground uh, when we're working with the kids and they're like, Kobe, yeah. like everybody wanted to be Kobe. Right. So we had that. And I was like, ours was Michael Jordan growing up. And you had all those people like you can still be your own version of that. Right. And it doesn't have to be basketball. It doesn't have to be a race car driver. It doesn't have to be a singer. Right. But you should be chasing your passion just as much. And I agree with that because I, I think like a kid a lot. I and, don't, unfortunately. Yeah, I, well, well, I think I that's probably balance. fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably fortunate that we, both of us don't, because then who knows what we'd be doing. Yeah. But yeah, the, I feel like at the end, is like, how do we get here? And it's stepping off the cliff. Yes. Right? Uh, so now that we're at this point where, and it's, uh, without going into financials and stuff like that, Sarah and I can af afford our bills at this point. Yes. And we could afford to travel a little bit, which we haven't been there before. Right. Right. So are we being smart about it? Probably not as smart as we could be. No. Uh, but probably not as safe as probably, I don't even know how to say it. We're, we're not being super safe. So we're not boring ourselves to death. Yes. By saying, oh, just next year or yeah. saving up for vacation. So... Where do we go from here now, though? What and I'm this is we're just giving advice to saying this is how we got to this point, and we're not financially like no frugal, and we just <laughs> don't have all. The, I mean, yeah, we are a little frugal. Um, I am. Scooter's not. I am not. But we're also like, what are we going to do next? Uh, we don't save. We don't save as much as we should. We probably don't spend as much as we should. I don't know. Yeah. But what we, what's our plan from here? Just overall plan. For my dreams or your dreams or both? Both. I, I just want to put that out there. Now that we got to this point, we still have to go further, right? It's true. So, 
I don't, I feel I've been trying to do better because a, a lot of my goals are based on finances. Uh, it's a history of financial stuff that I have stuff to deal with. So a lot of mine is security when it comes to money, which is good and bad in its own right. So my current goal plan dreams is that to make sure that there's enough in savings for like every thing that I can imagine so like there's a car savings and then there's like a travel savings and there's like a scooter wants to buy crazy stuff savings so there's there's like all these little things to make sure that when the time comes to like hey there's a trip to Africa and it's only like four grand I think we should go that we can be like all right let's go so for me it's making better and making smarter decisions when it comes to our finances and not so much planning because I mean really it's more on a whim when we come to travel but just being prepared to say yes to more opportunities, especially when they seem scary. Right? Yeah. I mean, where they're not necessarily jumping off a cliff. Right. Uh, but they are, like, going into some, like... It's like looking un- over the edge. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, can we do that? Um, and the cool thing is, as we're getting to this point, is, like, you st- we're finding more yeses. Yeah. Can we do that? And we've gotten to the point, uh, I feel financially and even physically because realistically think about it if we if we didn't stay somewhat physically active talk about our emotions like each other yeah uh, and those types of things if if a trip did come and it was the best deal in the world we probably wouldn't buy it right because they're like oh you know i won't i'm not gonna feel good yeah. i don't like the food there um i really don't like traveling with sarah yeah. you know all the, think about those things it's like there's a lot that has to do with chasing your dreams that's not just financial. Yes. Like, you can afford, like, the best trip in the world, but if you're not going with somebody that you want to take that trip with, right. uh, it's not even close to worth the money. Yes. So we have to continue liking each other. So that's kind of my, <laughs> mine on the chasing your dreams to get from here forward is to keep liking each other. Yeah. Um, and doing the work for the love part, of course, and, of course, just being ourselves, communicating being stupid, having the hard conversations. I feel like chasing your dreams is really hard to do if you're not communicating those yes. and you're not honest yeah. uh, with the people that are around you or especially yourself. Yes. It's was like, oh, I love this when you really don't. Yeah. I literally wrote down, there's enough people to doubt you. Keep growing and going. Like... It, people are totally going to think that your ideas are dumb. There's definitely enough people out there to be like, that's a stupid choice. Why would you do that? Or I have no idea what you're talking about. Why would you, how is this a business model? How is this a this? Why are you spending your time on this? Who cares? There's enough people to doubt what you're doing. Just, just don't doubt yourself. It's hard. Yeah, I know. I mean, seriously, my whole company is based on <laughs> a business plan that nobody can understand. Facts. And everybody wants to hear it. And they always say it's a good idea, but they all, it's, it's like, well, that seems a little risky. Yeah. How are we really going to do that? That seems a little far out there. Uh, but the people that are dealing with the people that we're trying to help are sitting there going, man, that's great. We need that. Yeah. And then the business plan, they're like, I don't see how you're going to make any money doing that. (laughs) That's me Um, saying that to him, by the way. Yeah. And. Everybody else is kind of like, man, there's a lot of money that could be. I was like, well, great. Can you show me who's <laughs> who's forking out all that money to do that? Uh, but those kind of things. I've, I've been told very, especially family members, especially older generation. Yeah. Um, well, and I want to say older generation. That's my age. Yes. Uh, most people that I, because I'll be 48 this year. And most people that I talk to that are 48, like in their 40s and over, look at me like I'm nuts. Like that, that doesn't make any sense. You're going to play board games with kids and that's going to save them. Yes. Yes. That that is, that's the craziness that I feel. Yes. Okay. Uh, Doing things in the community that might help people. I don't know. Uh, But yeah, there's so many people that are going to doubt you, especially if you're doing something that's right. Yeah. It seems like if you really have a really good idea, you're going to get a lot of doubt out there. Why? Why? Because you're doing something unprecedented. Yes. And it makes people uncomfortable. And what people don't understand, they tend to fear. Yep. And we'll get into those subjects, I'm sure. Uh, But yeah, that's our... Chase your dream. If if it's a dream and somebody doubts you, 
cool. Yeah. Find people that don't. Right. Find people that lift you up. Find people that you can lift up. Yep. Because even while you're chasing your dream, even if you're not chasing your dream, if you're helping somebody else chase their dream, holy smokes, that might be your dream. Right. That exactly. could be your your niche yeah. in the world. Yep. We need people like that. Yes. So, what are you going on for days? Uh, <laughs> chase your dreams. You can't tell. Scooter's passionate about dreams. Yes. Chase your dreams. Whoever you are right now, whatever you're thinking about doing that's totally awesome and you don't think you can do it. Please try it. Yeah. Please, please, please try it. That's all I can say. Yep. And actually try it. Don't just like, mm. <laughs> What was that? Mm. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna, but my dad, my dad said no, oh, and geez. then this. You know, we all have that. Uh, so yeah, it's our Advise Me Not. Do you have anything else to close out the Advise Me Not? I do not. Because you have a longer list than I do, yeah, and I ramble you, more. You said a lot of mine in yours, mm. so I just left it. So I cheated. No. I mean... I leaned over. Your eyes are old. You can't read this. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot actually read. All I can see is I can't read. I can't read <laughs> your writing upside down from this far. Not even uh, close. It's just blurry. Yeah. Blurry and blue. <laughs> uh, well, Thanks. For listening. Thanks, guys. Yeah. If you have anything. Wait, we're not done. Yeah. If we have anything about this subject, oh. about chasing your dreams, or uh, we can help. and We can try. Yeah. Well, the one thing we can help is encouragement. Yes. That's something we will give out freely. Oh, yeah. Now, when, if there's something, a subject that we can actually connect you with somebody, let us know. Because we do actually know a few people that do some amazing things in the community and around the world. And those say we, we do know some. Yes. If we don't, we're here for encouragement. It's like, that sounds awesome. Well, at least do those types, types of things. So hit us up on the social media, um, at Sarah and scooter. You'll find us on, uh, Instagram mostly. Uh, but you can also email us at Sarah and scooter at gmail.com. That says, so that's the end of our advise me not yes. section. Oh, but we're not done yet. Why? Never. Oh, shout outs. Shout, shout out. out. Woo. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to go last this time. Oh, no. Okay. Here's my shout out. Uh, there is somebody that's in this community that uh, I'm part of and, and organize here in Sacramento that. I don't think gets thinks he's as cool as he is. Okay. Uh, um, he's on, he writes, he's published, I think now 12 or 13 books. Uh, he's a teacher at a school downtown. He also broadcasts and writes, uh, some role-playing games on my time to tabletop channel. He's been doing that for years now, religiously on Tuesday nights. And the stuff that comes out of this gentleman's mind is phenomenal. I aspire to write like this person, even though I'm not a good writer. But uh, <laughs> the way he puts things together is just so imaginative. And so it puts pieces together. It was like, I didn't even see history or that event in that light. But he really does. His name is Michael Panish. Yay. Uh, yeah. Uh, great guy. Good friend. He really is a big part of some of the kids lives uh, at the school he teaches at um, introduce them into Dungeons and Dragons yep. um, he's always the guy that they go to you know to get kind of advice from just life advice because they trust him uh, when it comes to editing and some of our stuff that we've published he's he's been there and helped us out immensely he's done a lot of flavor text uh, for our published role playing game uh, just just an amazing dude and he's one of the most learned people when it comes to the English language that I know. And he's not pompous about it. He really is not pompous. So uh, I'm going to say Michael Panish. Yay, Love you, dude. Michael. All right. So I have two. Um, one's kind of dumb, but I would like to shout out Delicious Baked Goods. That's not a company. That's just a statement. I liked baked goods. I've had some good ones lately, and I would just like to shout out for anyone who's making baked goods. I appreciate you. Please keep making those. Please. So my second one is a little more serious. So I want to shout out everyone who's going through some rough stuff, who needs a hug, a cry, a laugh, a vacation, a push, a friend, a high five, a night out. We see you. We love you. We've got you. Love you guys. That's a big deal. I know. If we can help, <laughs> let us know. Yeah. 
I mean, those kind of things, like, we're not always perfect. No, never. I mean, we we struggle daily with certain, with, you know, kids, our relationship, bills. I mean, we have all those things going on all the time. Like, we get frustrated with each other, um, and then we we don't have time off, and we, you know, all those things. We've missed the mark. But if we can help out in any way, in an encouraging word, or, hey, I just... I can't afford to go out to do those kind of things or, you know, where do I go f- for my third date or, Hey, I'm really looking for a job in this industry. It's like, let us know. Uh, we will try and help. Yes. It's not one of those things. We'll just kind of like brush it under the, the rug. We will try yes. and we may give you bad advice, but it's not out of ill intent. Never. No, we're, we really are trying to do better. So, Thanks so for you, that. That if means you need a lot. us. We're here. Yeah, because we need you. We need people. Yeah, we need community, and, and we need all that. So definitely, that was great. Right. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I didn't know that was coming. I know. Me either. But at the end. Oh my gosh. You knocked me upside the head with that one emotionally. Sorry. No, don't be sorry. There's a good amount of people in our life that are going through some stuff. That is fact, and and some of us are us. Yes. <laughs> We're going through those, some things, too. Um, and if you want to know about those things, we will share them with you. <laughs> uh, let us know, guys. Yeah. Other than that, we will see you next time. Will we? I hope so. Yeah, we will. Okay. Okay, bye. bye. Okay, bye. I'm Patrick. And I'm Andrew. And I'm Christian. And I'm Allie. And we are Rad Theater, a podcast where a bunch of friends play role-playing games and share a single brain cell, and the GM doesn't always have it. Oh, and it's theater spelled the correct way, T-H-E-A-T-R-E. 